As much as I love sort of the workflow that Premiere has, especially with After Effects and all that, I am slowly falling in love with DaVinci and what the developers of DaVinci are continuously doing to make the program better and better. And I say that because in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on a face refinement feature that comes with DaVinci Resolve that is so easy to use. And if we tried to do the same thing in Premiere Pro, we'd have to track footage, add adjustment layers, and you know tweak a lot of different settings to get it to work. And the results aren't honestly all that good compared to what you can get very quickly with DaVinci Resolve. And if you're new here, we have over 200 videography related videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you wanna know the music or the equipment we use to make our videos, I've left all links in the description. So let's jump in. All right, I'm in DaVinci Resolve. I'm in the edit page. I have my footage loaded in the timeline and my sequence is set up. We are good to go. So this is the footage we're gonna be using and built into DaVinci Resolve now is a super easy effect to use called the beauty effects. For this effects filter, I am in DaVinci Resolve 18.66 right now. I don't think it's available in earlier versions and this is also the studio version. If you do upgrade to DaVinci Resolve 19 Studio, you will have this as well. And if you're looking for just a really quick way of smoothing skin, this is the way to do it. It's a little faster than doing the more advanced approach of face refinement, because this way you can stay on the edit page. To get started, just make sure you have the effects tab open, and then you go down here to the search bar and you type in uh, beauty. Sometimes if you don't click in the right spot, it won't show you the right panel, even though logically it doesn't really make sense that you'd have to click a specific thing, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So here, even though we've started to type in beauty, even if I click on no selection, it doesn't show up. I have to click on open effects for the search term to start to show up. What would make more sense is if anything you search for in the search bar pops up for any of these lists here, but that's not the way it works, at least right now. Okay, so let's take this and we will drop it onto our footage. And then over here, we wanna make sure that we are in the effects tab. Sometimes you'll be in the video tab and you won't know, you know where your settings are, so you can go over to effects. And right off the bat, you can see that it is starting to smooth the skin. And it's actually doing a pretty good job just by itself, but we can go a step further with this. If you drop down the advanced options, you'll see that we are set to the Ultra Beauty tab, and that gives you the most options. For the smoothing method, we have Flatten, but you can go to Filter, and it'll give you a slightly different uh, end result. So we'll stick to Flatten, and then we'll go to the Strength and the Levels. And as you can see, if we go to Zero, it'll be as if we turned off the effect. And then if we pump that all the way up, you can see that that's a bit exaggerated now. So let's just fine tune this until we're happy with the results. So I'd say somewhere around 0.77. Then in terms of the levels, we can do the same and sort of fine tune it. So I think that looks good, 0.65. And then for the quality, I always prefer to work on full. This gives us the best results. In terms of detail recovery, if you want to bump up some of the details so it pops through, you can do that. But in my opinion, the point of this filter is to hide imperfections. So I'm gonna keep strength on the lower side. Now for gamma, it sort of analyzes the brights and darker spots and sort of evens them out. You're gonna get a smoother finish, but it's not gonna look realistic. So I would suggest keeping the gamma on the left side. And we don't need to worry about the blur because we've already blurred quite a bit up here with the strength. And for texture recovery, this can help a bit if you wanna introduce a little bit of what skin naturally looks like. So we'll keep it about 0.3. And if we turn off the beauty effect, you can see the difference. So it brings back in a little bit more of the texture in the skin and makes it a little more realistic. So it's not just the entire face is being smoothed. And I think I'll lower the texture just a bit. And then for scale, we also wanna keep this on the smaller side because we are working with the pores of skin and the texture on skin, which typically is not very big. Then we have grain down here. I normally keep this off, but if you wanna add a bit of grain, you can do that. And the last thing we have here is the global blend option. Over here on the left side would be as if you turn the filter off and all the way on the right is all of your parameters set exactly how you set them. So you can dial in sort of how much or how strong you want the effect to be overall. So we can set it to like 0.9 or if you're happy with all the individual settings you made, then you can just keep it to full. 
As you saw with this beauty effects, you can get a pretty good smoothing of the skin within, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. However, you're not gonna get any effects for like eye color, lips, or anything like that. If you do need more of a high-end professional approach, then we would be at the limitations of what this effects filter can do. And in that case, you'd wanna go into the color page and use the face refinement uh, here. And Ali already has a tutorial on face refinement on the channel that you can check out. But if you're looking for just a quick way to smooth skin, this is a really great way to do it. And DaVinci Resolve didn't have it before, but in the more recent versions, they now include it. And it's uh, pretty easy to do. I really hope DaVinci keeps going in this workflow where they're saving editors time by making plugins or filters that you can apply directly to your footage with just a few clicks. And then from there, in the back end, DaVinci does all the hard work, like the face tracking and all that, so that you're spending more time on the storytelling and making sure that your videos as a whole end up at, with a high quality, as opposed to spending so much time just tweaking buttons and numbers and everything. They're headed in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. I hope they continue. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from us in the future. We have over 200 videography related videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you wanna know any of the music or the equipment we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.